Today, I want to remind you that journalists often elaborate to deepen readers' connections. One way they do this work is to craft allusions and analogies which invite the reader with just a few words to make profound associations. Let me show you what this looks like. I know that you study the connotative meaning of words when you study literature, how some words suggest multiple meanings or call to mind a host of images for the reader. Well, journalists know this, and when they think about making allusions or analogies, they think about how to suggest the most meaning with just a few words, and it's all about associations. They want to use references the readers will know or be willing to find out about. Now I'm going to show you a list of references. They're names of people, places, or events. And if you know the reference, each item or term will mean a lot to you. If you don't, it won't. Picture that someone says to you, it was like blank and then you fill in the reference. Now, think about that. It was like blank. If you don't know the reference, you'll want to think about what that might mean and get some sort of explanation. We'll do one quickly, the first one. The term is September 11th. Go ahead, think about what that might mean. What would it mean to a reader if a writer said of an event that was like September 11th? You might be thinking that if a writer said an event was like September 11th, it would suggest to the reader that it was tragic, that it came out of nowhere, that it was a national calamity. Try these out now. What would it suggest if a writer said that something was like blank or some place was like blank or so-and-so was like blank? What do you associate with these references? You might not know all of them. Pause the video as you take a few minutes to look through each of these images and try it out. Hmm, you might have been thinking that you don't know a lot about Kent State. If I look at that image, it's a flower stuck in the rifle of the National Guard. I guess it might mean like a peaceful resistance, or maybe that can happen to resistors. Writers. Now let me show you how I can tuck one of these references into an illusion or an analogy. An illusion might sound like this. The kid was tough and righteous and he wasn't going to back down. Maybe this wasn't the arena and he wasn't Katniss, but he knew when he had to stand up for himself. Do you see how I just alluded to? That means referred to a character from a hugely popular novel, The Hunger Games, whom I assumed the reader knows about. My goal is for the reader to associate the courage and righteousness of Katniss with the subject of my news story. An analogy might sound more like a direct comparison, like this passage. The parking lot erupted into discord with teens and adults taking sides like the Capulets and the Montagues. Let's recap for a moment. The main elaboration technique that we're trying is one where you deepen a reader's connections by making references they'll have associations with. To do this, you can try making direct comparisons or alluding, making a fleeting reference to a familiar term. Often you consider words that have connotations. 
usually people or events or particular places that your reader associates with certain meanings. Then your reader will make profound associations. Writers, now it's your turn. Go back to the lesson platform for the next activity.